Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. My name is Francisco and I'm an artist from Portugal. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how to paint in Photoshop like a sculpture. So for this technique, we only gonna need two things. One is Photoshop and uh, the second will be a pre-made texture. You can use any texture you want, depending on of what you are trying to do. For example, I will be doing a house here, so I try to make a texture that uh, have a lot of uh, noise, a lot of grain and uh, a lot of variation, so I can uh, easily get the, the wall textures and uh, yeah, it just gets me a more interesting result for that purpose. Our brush for this technique will be the lasso tool, which is basically a tool that allows us to select uh, freehand selections, just draw our own selections. And I will first select the shape of the house, then I will invert the selection I made and I will delete the background. And as you can see here, we already have the full shape of the house. We always can tweak the shape, uh, cut parts on, off, add new parts in, grab new parts from the texture. Yeah, just uh, use the lasso tool as your uh, as your ends in the in sculpting this this house. After we are done cutting the the main shape of the house, I will be deciding where the light source comes from. Now that I have decided where the light source comes from, I will first paint all the areas in light. For this I will grab the lasso tool again, I will select all of the area in light and I will use levels to make it lighter. Now that we defined the lighter areas, we will invert the selection so everything else that wasn't select will be now the selection and we're gonna with the levels make it a little bit darker so we get a more pronounced uh, difference between the light uh, the light area and the shadow areas after we do this again with the lasso tool we're gonna select just the under part of the house without the roof then we're gonna grab the burn tool, which is a brush that can make uh, areas a little bit a little bit darker. And we're gonna just paint a smooth gradient of darkness under the roof. So it looks like the, the shadow under the roof is much more deep, much more intense. As you can see here, we already have uh, our house much more defined and we just took uh, like three minutes to do this. Now we're gonna paint the house. First, we start by painting the walls. We make it a little bit warm. We use the color balance for this. Then we invert the selection and we paint the roof. We're gonna make it a little bit red, also using the color balance. And from this point on, we're gonna start to add details. The way we work so far will be the same way we're gonna work all the rest of the process, always using the lasso tool to select areas and then combining it with the levels and combining it with the color balance. Now we're gonna uh, design some doors and windows. Again, just using the lasso tool and keep on creating the different selections. If you press shift while doing your selections, you can make multiple selections at the same time. So you can draw different selections at the same time. So that's a nice tip that I recommend you to try. So it makes the process much more fast and you don't need to do one by one the doors or the windows. You can just do them all at the same time. Now we're gonna make our doors and windows a little bit darker so they are already defined. And we're gonna work always in this way, always from the, the bigger areas to the smaller areas. Same thing we did at the beginning with the roof, we're going to make the top of the window a little bit darker to project those uh, deeper shadows. We're going to cut out a little bit of the bottom of the door so it looks like the door is inwards in relation to the wall. Again, always using the lasso tool here. Now we're going to paint the, the door in green and we're just going to do the same thing for the windows. Just select the shape of the inside part of the window and also change the color and the, the levels 
So there is a variation and a contrast between what was inside of the window and the wall. Same for the door in the, in the shadow areas. Now we have uh, our house pretty well defined already and now we can start working details. I'm gonna start to add different details on the windows and doors as if there, there is some, uh, some kind of glass or something. As you can see, this process is very repetitive. It's always using the lasso tool to just uh, draw the different shapes of the house. But uh, what this technique provides to us is a very well-defined uh, drawing because the selection is very sharp. So everything will be very precise and very clean at the end. Now I will add some frames around the door and then I can grab the burn tool again to, uh, to make a little bit of a shadow around those, those selections, those frame selections that I made around the doors. To do this, I just select those frames like I did now, I make them brighter and then I invert the selection. As you can see here, selection inverts and then I just, I just paint around the, the frames that I just created. This will just add a little bit more of information to the house and this is just a nice detail. Now I will add more details in the under the roof here, just a little bit of a square so it can look like a structure under the roof. I will add more details to the wall. For some reason, my screen recorder didn't record the the actions of the the levels of the color balance they are not showing here so I will just put those menus on the on the screen so you can see what they look like if you don't know how they look uh, so then you can follow more easily but uh, yes when you see here the colors appearing I was uh, working with the menus but they are not appearing here on the on a recording so from now on we're gonna be working in the same way Again, always adding new details. I will just grab the burn tool here to make the, the volumes and the shadows more present and to just give this sense of more volume tree to the, to the house. Just gonna make the bottom of the house a little bit darker. So now I will let you enjoy a little bit of the process and I will come back to you very soon.
So as you can see here, I already worked some more details. I worked the roof. I just repeated kind of a pattern on the roof that looks like tiles on the roof. Uh, then I just add variations on the walls. I add rocks on the bottom of the house. All of this I did using only the lasso tool, the levels and the color balance. For the windows, I use a little bit of a, a brush just to define a little bit more the, the frame of the window inside. That's the only part where I use a brush in this process. And now I'm keep on adding uh, more and more details. This part of the process is just more focused now on adding color variation, light variation, so the house just gets more and more realistic as we go and much more appealing and interesting to the eye. Now I will add some details on the doors because I didn't did that yet, I forgot that part so I will just add it now, very fast, I will just make some selection lines so this will be like wood boards on the door. Now I will add some shadows in the down part of the, of the doors so it looks like it's an old door, kind of rusty door. As you know I love to paint old houses so this one also will be kind of old, old little cabin. As you can see here, the light comes a little bit from, from above, so I just make the, the down parts even more dark, as if the house is sitting some, somewhere. Here I'm just focused on the, on the house itself, I'm not painting any backgrounds, but uh, if you would paint a background or like a, a field where the house stands or a road, you would see that that dark area right on the bottom part of the house will make a difference and will make the house stand much more realistic uh, on something. Now I'll just make the areas under the roof a little bit more darker and kind of greenish so it looks like there was humidity there and yeah, it's an area that doesn't dry that easy and just gives a overall more interesting old look to the house. Now we're almost done with the process. I will be using the color range option in the selection tab on top to just uh, define different areas and just give a more uh, harmonious uh, color to the house. Now I will select the full house and I will warp it a little bit so I have a more interesting shape to it as you can see here. You just go to select and then warp and you can work the shape of the house as you want just to make it a little bit more dynamic. I will bring the chimney up, the chimney I just cut out from the, from the house. And that's pretty much it, that's pretty much the full process. We'll just add some details here with the brush, some like lines as if there are some cables falling off of the house. Just writing some things on the wall, making some kind of antenna here on the roof. And that's pretty much it. Just to make a little bit more of graffiti under the wall here, which is stable in my work. I always like to make some graffiti, some human intervention on the walls of the houses. And uh, we, we are pretty much done. As you can see here, 
I will maybe just add a little bit of noise. Okay, just adding a little bit of noise so the Alice is even more interesting looking and everything is tied together much nicer. And uh, this is the end of the house. You can see here when I zoom in how defined everything is. As you can see here, all the lines are very sharp and defined, and that's like a perk of this technique, just makes everything very smooth, very defined, very sharp. So that's it. That's the process of painting else like a sculpture. I hope you like this and see you in the next video. Bye bye.